Have you ever had a moment of clarity so strong that it changed your life path forever? Mine happened in a minivan of all places while I was taking my children to preschool. They were all bundled up in their car seats. Oh my God, so cute. And I had just sent my partner off to run a company that started at our kitchen table and was now flourishing. Obviously, I felt so lucky. I got to stay at home with my kids. So why was I so angry? It all came together in a flash. Suddenly, I felt betrayed. I also felt foolish. Most of the time I was spending was invisible, even to myself, until it wasn't. My partner and I had signed up to share the load of the household, and until that moment, I thought we were. The anger suddenly began to make sense. It was a direct result of feeling unsafe and unseen financially, and it was ruining my mental health and my marriage. I knew something needed to change drastically and fast. It was shortly after that that we packed up everything and moved to Amsterdam to reassess our agreements and find a new way forward together. Tonight, I want to talk to you about financial safety and the undue burden of financial burden placed on women in our economy. A few months before that fateful moment in the minivan, we bought a house. We both went to the bank to get a loan. After a few moments, the bank loan guy said to me, you don't work? Somewhat defensively, I said to him, I take care of the house and the children. Quickly, he answered, OK, great, it's better if we leave you off the loan. Suddenly, I couldn't breathe. How did I, the most independent woman anyone knew, become a financial liability despite working night and day? No one else seemed to be concerned. Most told me I should just feel lucky. So I did. I doubled down on gratitude and tried to move on. A few months later, my best friend, who also happens to be my sister, confided in me. She felt like something wasn't adding up for her as a mother and an elementary school teacher. I nodded along as she described some of the very same conflicts I was having with my own partner and within myself. What was going on? I began drawing on a napkin. It looked something like this. <clears throat> you can see both partners have the same 24 hours in a day. That's how it starts out anyway. It turns out they don't give you more time when you have a baby or begin a household. It, the key becomes who is getting paid for their time. In my case, my partner was contributing a lot of time and a little bit of, a lot of money and a little bit of time. For me, it was a lot of time and a little bit of money. Combined, it made the whole of our household work. But you can see, if for any reason we no longer shared a household, time invested would not convert to personal financial gain. There's only one name on the paycheck. Everything else is invisible. As I left coffee that day, with, I began to realize that becoming a mother and starting a household are two of the most dangerous things a woman can do financially. I want you to raise your hand if anything I'm saying resonates. <laughs> what I have learned from having similar coffees with people from around the world is that at first, it feels like you should have known better. Then the anger begins to build within the couple. But it is all, this is understandable, actually, just so you know, <laughs> it's understandable, but it's not the whole story. It turns out it is also a result of how we value things in our economy. Here, you can see a simplified sketch of our economic system. You can see that it has three different entities, government, 
businesses, and households. Here is what I was realizing. I was, in fact, running an entity within the economy, yet I couldn't afford to buy a house. Economics is often referred to as the science of self-interest. It assumes that everyone is always acting in their own best interest to amplify their own financial value. Does this sound like you? Me, yeah, me neither. Interestingly enough, it has been a recent wave of female economists that have helped us reimagine our eco economy as less like this drawing and more like an ecosystem, like our planet. Much like the cost of oil production fails to account for the cost uh, of its reliance on our, our, our environment, our economic models fail to account for household labor, yet depend on it. As recent Nobel Prize laureate Claudia Golden so eloquently illustrates, the world runs on women. In the other two pillars of our economy, business and government, contracts and laws are used to create financial safety. We can see a great example of this just outside the theater. The Netherlands has managed to become the biking capital of the world, despite being one of the rainiest countries in Europe. <laughs> it turns out, in addition to infrastructure, they also have legal infrastructure to protect the, the difference between the safety in bikers, a person on a bike, and a person in a car. So even when inequity exists, we do have the ability to create financial safety through laws and infrastructure. However, it only takes one or two times of watching friends go through a divorce to see that our legal and financial systems are failing to account for the difference in equity between partners in a household. We all know that there is an urgency to save our planet from the exploitation that it's going through using technology. I began to wonder, can we use technology to address similar extractions of value from the household? Then I found smart contracts built on the blockchain. And I could immediately see the power they could have to bridge the gap between the financial world, where all the money lives, the legal world, where all the protections are, and the household, where a lot of unpaid value was being created. You may have heard of blockchain and see it as a passing fad or something that's just too complicated, but stay with me. It's actually quite simple, yet very powerful. What is the blockchain? <laughs> I'm just going to make it really easy. <laughs> it is a public infrastructure network, like the internet, except it's trustless, which only means that people can interact directly without having to rely on a platform or a company. Smart contracts are like smart anything in our world. They have the ability, they are infused with technology, to make them more connected and more capable. You may or may not remember the first smartphone. We could not predict what this technology would do to our lives. We are a similar moment with blockchain. It has the power to transform our financial world by revolutionizing the way we assign value. With a staggering 50% chance that a household will dissolve, we as a society, it's very important that we provide financial safety through clear agreements and robust infrastructure. Let me show you. <laughs> Smart contracts are, are, have the ability to hold the complexity that exists within the household and translate it into a language our outdated financial system can understand. Now let me show you. <laughs> Smart contracts can start out as a template. No one knows what it's like to run a household until they've done it. We can arm partners with a template to, ne to negotiate away from instead of starting from scratch. This would enable conversations around time investment even before a household has begun or a baby has been born. 
smart contracts can even make time investment consensual. Time investment between partners needs to be explicit instead of relying on silent social norms. Think about all the parts of running a household and how you became to be in charge of them. Chances are it's due to outdated gender norms or expectations and not any actual agreement. Smart contracts can hold multiple forms of value, like time investment from each partner, even if it's not yet recognized by the financial system or society at large. Households are unique entity one that are contributed to over time and in multiple ways. Some financial, yes, but there is so much more. Smart contracts can automate agreements. Think back to that friend that went through a divorce. Do they have to negotiate for payments legally owed to them every month? Our legal and financial system leave it to the former couple to carry out agreements often exaggerating existing power imbalances. This would not be possible if their agreement was in the smart contract, as the payments would be automatic. This automation could even be present from the beginning, so that each partner could see and understand their contribution from the beginning. This would leave less room for control and financial abuse. Smart contracts can even allow for sharing of data anonymously to quantify the billions of dollars of unpaid labor contributed to our world economy each year. This is just the beginning. Much like the innovation of the smartphone, it's really hard to tell how this technology will change our lives. But smart contracts are uniquely positioned to bring long overdue disruption to our biased and outdated economic system. Yes, men can and need to grow their awareness. And governments and businesses can and need to change to allow for more diversity and inclusion. However, this will not change the fact that our economy relies on unpaid labor. No amount of leaning in to access financial equality is going to change the fact that someone still needs to raise the children and manage the households. I want women to move throughout the financial system like the economic powerhouses that they are today, no matter how they contribute to the economy. Utilizing, leveraging blockchain, starting with smart contracts, we can decode the future of the economics. In the words of Meryl Streep, we have grown up learning the language of men. It is now time to learn the language of women. I would like to add, we have grown up living the economics of men. It is time to acknowledge and incorporate the economics of women. Thank you.